In this video tutorial, I want to talk about the scale non-uniform tool and how you can use uh, point attractors to basically scale these uh, rectangles uh, based on the distance between the rectangles and the point attractors and use the scale non-uniform to produce uh, such a pattern. So uh, you can find the scale non-uniform by double clicking on the canvas and searching for SC scale non-uniform. You can also go to the transform and uh, in the find you can find the scale non-uniform tool. Okay, to start from scratch, I'm going to first use a rectangle here. So let's go to the curve and into the primitive section, you can find the rectangle tool here. So I'm going to use a rectangle. And because I'm going to use this method to scale the rectangles in a facade, I'm, uh, I'm going to change the plane of these rectangles. So uh, the default plane is uh, XY plane. I'm going to give it an XZ plane and also a size for the X and Y. The input is a, a domain input, but if you give a number to it, it will be zero to that number. So it will be 20 to 20. And now I'm going to give that uh, an rectangular array. So I'm going to go for array and use the rectangular array tool. And what I'm going to array is this rectangle. So I'm going to give this here. The cell which you want to array is basically in this example is exactly the rectangle we used. Because uh, if you check this out, the cell is a rectangular uh, array cell and the length of the rectangle will be the, will be the x array direction, the height or the width of the rectangle will be the uh, y, count, y distance, of array. So if we give the same rectangle of the geometry to the cell, we will have fitted uh, rectangles here. So this will be easy. And we can give numbers here. So 15 to maybe 15 for y. And here we have, okay, some rectangular array of rectangle. So now we need uh, um, to scale these to uh, scale them in the diameter. So I'm going to scale these in the diameter and we will go something like this. Uh, if we scale these rectangles on the diameter and scale them on this uh, vector, we will have our rectangles uh, exactly as the same you saw at the first of the tutorial. So I'm going to give a surface to these curves. And now I'm going to use the scale non-uniform tool to scale these surfaces. The plane of the scale non-uniform is the um, is a plane based on an x y direction, and the x will be here, and the y will be here, and z will not work for this tutorial because it's for a solid or something that has a z dimension. Uh, but in this uh, example, we just we just have an x y. So I'm going to uh, extract the center of these uh, panels. I'm going to go to the centroid area of this geometry. I have the centroid, and now if I give an x z plane to this, you can see that the scale will be in the x direction and the y direction. If I give this to the plane and give maybe. 0.5 to the x, you can understand that uh, the panels are scaling in the x direction. Okay, so we don't need the x, y plane for scaling. We basically need the x uh, towards the edge and to the, towards the vertex here and the y towards the another vertex. So we need such a plane here. It's the xz plane, okay, let me draw this, uh, it's an xz plane just rotated 45 degrees because we have a square here, so it's just a 45 degree uh, rotation. 
I'm going to use another tool called uh, rotate plane. So I'm going to give it a rot, a rotate plane. And give the plane here. We'll use the right click and degrees because we want to give it a 45 degrees here. And here we go. That's the 45 degrees. And you can see that the planes just rotated. And now I'm going to give this to the plane. And you will see that the, okay, these panels will scale on the diameter. So I'm, uh, what I'm going to do is to give another number for uh, this scale because all of the patterns, all, all, all of those uh, uh, rectangles are scaling in the x direction and just by 0.4. So how can I just have a, um, different scales for different panels? Let's assume we want a point attractor here. We can use the bounding box in the surface tool, bounding box, and have a bounding box of all of these panels, rectangles. Right click on them and use the union box. So we will have a union box all over that. Uh, uh, panels and why I'm you uh, why I'm using this bounding box is because I'm going to use the evaluate surface tool to make point attractors uh, I've talked about uh, evaluate surface in grasshopper commands tutorials I've also talked this in the grasshopper course because we have talked about the point attractors curve attractors uh, how we can have multiple points how we can have parametric points. So if you want to know more about the point attractor technique, you can check out the course in the website. So I'm going to give this to the surface and right-click reparameterize. So this box will basically have a reparameterized domain, a 0 to 1 for the U direction and a 0 to 1 for the V direction. And now we can use just an MD slider, multi-dimensional slider, and check the courses about, uh, I, I've explained about the MD slider more, but it's just a simple 0, 0 to 1, 1 point UV point here. So I'm going to change this and change here. And now we have two point attractors. We want to attract these panels. So let me just turn this off and turn on the panels. We can turn the box off. Uh, we need a weight for all of these panels. Each panel will have a weight based on the point attractors. So the concept between uh, the concept uh, be, uh, behind the point attractor for uh, panels is that we can extract the centroids, okay? And we need a distance between the centroid uh, and the point attractor. So. If we just find the distance between this centroid and the point attractor, we will have a number, so maybe it's just a 20. So if we just find the distance between this point and the attractor, we will have another number, maybe 30. So the weight for this panel will be 30 and this panel will be 20. So you can see that we can give weights to these panels easily by comparing the grid of points and the point attractors. So the problem is that we have two point attractors. So how can we tell to the uh, computer that uh, these points, okay, maybe are for these point for this point attractor and these points are for this point attractor. So we have to uh, uh, tell each uh, centroid for a point attractor which is more near to that. And because if we want to use both of the point attractors, we will have two distances here. And how can we handle that? If we sum up the distance, it will not work. If we just uh, combine them, there's going to be a problem. So basically, we can say the grid uh, points uh, can compare to the uh, point attractors and see which one is near. And basically, that will be the uh, point attractor of that grid. So this is the concept with, uh, bes uh, behind the CP point tool. If you want to know the technique, it goes like this. You can give the grid of points to the point 
and the point attractor to the cloud. I've explained that in the course, but for now, this is a really, really quick technique. You can always give the grid, at, uh, grid points to the point and always give the attractor points to the cloud. And now we will have the distance uh, between the points and the point attractors. If you want to see which distance is going to be calculated, you can go to the curve and use the line here and connect the grids uh, points to the closest point. And you can see that it will just divide based on the distance. So if I change this, you can see we are always giving the distance to the nearest point attractor. Okay, so now we can just scale about this distance because uh, we have a distance big, so maybe 43, 30, 29, and those are not good for scale because we need a scale maybe 0 0.2, maybe 0 0.7. So it's going to be basically between 0 and 1, and those are not between 0 and 1. So you can download the tool I've put in the uh, in this video in, our, in my website. So you can go to the website and download this remap tool. You can easily uh, just drag it into Grasshopper and you will have a remap. It's the, it's the remap numbers of Grasshopper, but I have just combined uh, two tools to make it more and more and more easy. So it's going to scale numbers. It's a great tool. You can scale the distance between the minimum and the maximum you need. So I'm going to give it a 0 0.2 and a 0 0.8 and give this to the scale y. So we don't need a simple scale, we need a gradient scale between 0 0.2 to 0 0.8. So let's just turn the scale on. So we are going to only turn on the point attractors and the scale non-uniform output. So you can see that we can easily change the scale of this uh, by a simple CP point and a remap. We can also use graph mappers, uh, advanced techniques, but you can see that we can easily affect uh, those scale. We can also go from 0 0.8 to 0 0.2, change the number of the scale, and you can see here, maybe from 1 to 0 0.2, so the scale of the uh, rectangle on the uh, diagonal section will be just one so for the nearest one and this is the tutorial you can understand how uh, you can use the scale non-uniform simply by defining a good uh, plane uh, and using that for scaling this okay I'm going to extrude these in the y direction because we need them in the y direction and we can also use this remap to maybe extrude them in a minimum maximum of another number. So I can give uh, maybe 2 here and a 20 and that will be a minimum 2 for extrusion and maximum 20 for extrusion. And let's, let's give that to the Y. Okay, let me just make this more bigger you can see that the uh, further uh, those rectangles are they are more extruded or we can just simply switch those so you can see they can be more extruded in the nearest point of the point tractor so this will be the result and you can see how we use that uh, point attractor to scale and extrude them based on the distance between the point attractor and the center of that so feel free if you want to uh, feel free to comment on this on this, this video if you have any questions about that. But if you want to know more and more and complete information about the attractors, I'm uh, gathering some videos in the course for point attractors, curve attractors, and image attractors. So you can have a simple step by step for attractions. So this is the sim the simple tutorial about scale non uniform, and thank you for watching.